Coming back to our nugget, before we get into our episode, what was the big nugget you learned out in LA at Driven? Well, there's a hundred million of them, but here's the one that I'm going to pull out because it was, uh, it was, it's the most immediately actionable. We do a session called Tool Time, which is really fun because you know there's a hundred some odd entrepreneurs in the room, and and it takes hours, if not days, if not weeks, to figure out what software you're going to use for specific things, right? Like when you're right. really going to school on it, or even stumbling upon software, it's hard to know what works and what doesn't. And so we crowdsource it, and we just ask everybody to submit the tools that they love the most. And we, we got at least over 100, Ralph. The list is extensive. But the one that I'm really excited about is called chatbase.co, chatbase.co. Hmm. And what it does is it allows you to build a chatbot based off of your own proprietary data. So, so cool. You add it to your website, for instance. It crawls your website. And then now people can ask the chatbot questions based off of all the content on your website. And the more content robust your website is, obviously, the better the chat base works. And so they can, you know, I mean, you're answering questions about products, services, terms, um, materials, uh, shipping, receiving. Um, and it's it's unbelievably effective. And what's really cool about it too is it's iterative. So if somebody, you know, if it, it says something that you don't like or makes a mistake, you get to see every single chat that takes place. You get to correct anything that it says incorrectly. And then from that point on, it will always uh, respond perfectly. And so if you've got a content rich website, um, this is this is an absolute necessity. I especially love it for e-commerce and SaaS. Because yeah. if you have a content rich website and e-com and SaaS, what, the thing that's really, you know, obvious, but maybe not so obvious about those things is the transaction actually takes place on site. There's no call, book appointment, schedule. It's like, they're going to buy right now today. And if you can put an AI-driven chatbot that's preloaded with all of the information about your specific product, like, oh my goodness, you know, and you just make it easier for them to find than having to sift through things. So I'm not an affiliate. Uh, one of our members, I wish I could tell you which member came up with it because, um, I should really, really give them a shout out. Uh, oh, you know what? I think it was Rachel. So shout out to Rachel. Um, and I might be wrong about that. So now I'm now I'm nervous, Ralph. But chatbase.co, um, potentially from Rachel Perlmutter. Uh, pretty amazing little tool. And it's one of those examples of how like AI doesn't usurp or change the world. But it, it's it's just a you know one percent improvement here, and then another tool will give you another one percent improvement. That those compound effects are going to put you massively ahead of your competition. Yeah, no, that's huge. That's huge. The <clears throat> the other tool that's in this space that I'm aware of but have not used and put this on a list of things to test. Now that I have chatbase.co, it's chatbase.co, correct? Yep. .co is uh, myaskai.com. Does a similar thing. Um, and I've heard really, really good things about this through sort of secondary sources, but this is the future. Mm -hmm. I mean, this, especially on e -com, if you're not testing out these types of things at the, at the very least, like, oh my God, like the, the ability to be able to sort of upload your entire database of information, especially if you have a content rich site, which I know a lot of people listening to this show are big believers in content. Well, dude, I think the more content, content the rich site, there's an AI solution for that too, but you, you right. have to now you have to be yeah. content. -rich. Do you, you know what I love about my ask? I'm on, I'm on it now. Mm -hmm. I'm on my ask uh, it, it allows you to upload documents. It says upload a PDF text or doc file. And then you can chat with any document. And I, I, I dropped this as a nugget on a previous episode. I do this with legal documents. I did this two days ago. Yeah. I'm buying a, an apartment building in Fargo and I uploaded this document. And I started asking questions. What are the terms of the agreement? Is there anything here that I should be worried about? Is there anything that makes the seller, you know, puts the seller at risk? And it is insane how well it works. And I wasn't even using this tool. I actually use a, a separate tool that looks to be maybe not quite as effective as this one. So, um, so cool, man. It just blows yeah. me away that we're here. Like this feels, I'm just such an old guy. This feels like Star Trek, you know, yeah. like you're chatting with a PDF document. Oh, it's, it's, it's crazy to think about. And it's crazy to think about that. This is just the tip of the tip of the tip of the iceberg. Oh yeah. You know, it, people are like, oh my God, chat GPT, AI. Wow. That's amazing. And then they sort of stop and that's it. Like, no, like first off, <laughs> there's not going to be any other public tools released by, OpenAI 
uh, in the future, according to Sam Altman. The point is, is like that just Can got people. Blame the guy. He got what? Like, why would he? over hot coals and crucified by the angry mob? And he's like, "All right, we won't let you see what we're doing." You know, right. it's not. Oh, gosh, man, we just ruined everything. I know. You know, the guy was trying to be open, transparent, honest. He was trying to allow for some level of like public influence and public opinion, yeah. and instead, we just like straight up farmer and pitchforked him. It, it it's it's incredible and then when you have a conversation with a non with a non marketing person it always goes to fear based like oh my god they're taking over it's like oh my god. I, I, it's almost like one of those conversations that you don't want to have yeah because when i talk about ai i talk about it like this is transformational at least for my business business in general certainly on the marketing side uh, and people just immediately go to this fear-based thing. And that I think that all of that, you know, backlash that Sam Altman got is it's too bad. It really it's too is. Bad. I, I, I think really he, like him. I think he's the exact so right I, guy for that role. I think so too. And I think he's got his intentions in the right place, going to the government, looking to, you know, get regulation, like all these sorts of things. I don't know. He seems like one of the good guys. Hopefully, I used yeah. to think that. So let's about punish him. him. No good deed yeah. goes unpunished. Exactly. Just, That's know. what we do. Right. <laughs> oh, Get you're out. being honest about what you're doing. I'm gonna stab you in the heart. And then everybody, you know, every other company is building it all in the background, and they're doing it in the the fastest, cheapest, most dangerous way possible, and and we reward that. Yeah, yeah, it's unfortunate. But anyway, the tools that are there. Right now, we'll leave links in the show notes over at perpetualtraffic.com. Will AI replace me? I don't like the way this conversation is manifesting, by the way. It's, it's very polarized. On one hand, you're like, oh my goodness, the world's going to end. Chicken little sky is falling. Everybody's job is gone. And then on the other end is, no, you're going to be fine. There's no risk whatsoever. Bury your head in the sand. I'm in the middle. You know, 